Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 102.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released January 8th, 2014, beginning alphabetically as usual with Boom Studios and Adventure Time, the flip side number one of six. Why we love it? Paul Tobin and Colleen Coover, the team behind the Eisner Award winning Bandit, writing Adventure Time, it's a match made in comic book heaven. Why you'll love it? The Freaky Friday trope is turned on its head with an oo-sized twist. Tobin and Coover, together with newcomer Wook Jin Clark, bring you a dream Adventure Time miniseries like you've never seen. What it's about? Finn and Jake find themselves without a quest and a little too much free time. What better place to look for a new adventure than the adventurer's posting board? Only the adventure they grab might be more complicated than they first imagined. This might be the most complicated adventure they've ever been on. Next, we have Aurora Grimian story, Will of the Wisp, hardcover. After her parents' accidental death by mushroom poisoning, young Aurora Grimian is sent to live with her estranged grandfather in Ossuary Isle, deep in the southern swamps. Joined by her grandfather's pet raccoon, Missy, Aurora explores the fog-covered island of graves. Along the way, she meets its sinister residents who care for the tombstones and mausoleums, living out their lives by the strange rules of hoodoo magic. When ghostly things start happening out in the swamp and island residents start disappearing, Aurora thrusts herself into the middle of the mystery, uncovering secrets that might be better left buried. We've also got Hawk and Melee number 4 of 5. Corporate combat tears through a blissful family farm, changing the course of their lives irrevocably over the course of a decade. Featuring a story by Andrew E.C. Gaska of Space 1999 and Conspiracy of the Planet of the Apes, an art by Dan DeSalt of Criminal Millennium, The Dark Frontier, and a cover by F. Ruiz Velasco. Next, we have Protocol, Orphans number 3 of 4. The Black Friday terrorist plot has been unleashed and the devastation could cripple the United States as we know it. Will the orphans be able to stop Alconi in time, or will the saboteur in their ranks break the team apart before they even get their chance? We've also got regular show Skips, number 3 of 6. Every time Skips thinks he might be heading in the right direction, he finds himself waking up into the same nightmare. What's going on with this park and who is the guy with the creepy glasses? It's time for Skips to do something. He just needs to get more answers. We've also got Robocop Last Stand, number 6 of 8. OCP is won. Our heroes are dead. There's no hope for Detroit in this final battle. The city is for the taking, or so they believe. Maria's one last move to make that will change everything. OCP may have won the battle, but the war is far from over. Robocop will rise. We've also got Sons of Anarchy number 5. With Road quickly running out between the Sons and the Ghost Brothers, Kendra discovers a dark secret in the club's past that could mean a grisly end for her and Tig. With all options potentially ending bloody, Jax and the crew face a decision that will most certainly end in death, leaving only one question. Whose? And we've got Suicide Risk number 9. With an entire country in their grasp, the supervillain team Nightmare Scenario has forced the world's leaders to come to a table for negotiations. Leo's plan to help the team achieve their goals with the least amount of bloodshed seems to be working, but just a feeling's namesake warns of an even greater, bloodier calamity, and every life Leo has managed to save helping Nightmare Scenario against his will is suddenly at risk. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Abe Sapien number 9. Abe seeks shelter from the apocalypse in a small Arizona town that's been invaded by a familiar group of punks, but the more immediate problem is a field full of strange monsters spreading out of the dead like wheat. Next, we've got Halo Escalation number 2. Halo, one of the most celebrated video game series of all time, joins forces with Dark Horse for a thrilling new ongoing series. As Sarah Palmer fights to get the Arbiter and the Brute Ambassador to safety, Captain Lasky sneaks behind enemy lines to reestablish communications with the UNSC infantry. Their plans for escape are jeopardized, however, by a turncoat in their midst. We've also got Shalowan Cowboy number 4 of 4. It is high doom in the low desert as the Shalowan Cowboy tries to turn the tide in a dead sea of kamikaze zombies and learns that the devil you know may be easier to deal with than the devil you don't. 31 pages of fists and feet versus rotting flesh. It's not J.D. Salinger's catcher in the die. And we've got Star Wars number 13. After a defeat by rebel forces and the escape of prisoner Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader decides to clean house. From one end of the galaxy to the other, Vader's new broom, a squad of elite stormtroopers backed by the Dark Lord's own lightsaber, is sweeping the ranks of the Empire. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Ash in the Army of Darkness, number three. An old love returns, and Ash finds himself with an ally after escaping Wiseman's City of the Dead. Now the search for the Book of the Dead is on, and whoever finds it first can either escape or destroy the world for book. Only a book and a few words are all that separates the world of the living and the dead, and a new war is brewing. 
Next, we have Black Bat number eight. The fallout from recent events changed the dynamic between Carol, the Black Bat, and the shadow organization behind his creation. Black Bat wrestles with the choices he's made and how far he's willing to go to get justice. Are the strings attached to his redemption worth the price? We've also got Cryptozoic Man number three of four. The hostiles have crashed the party commonly referred to as life on Earth, giving humanity about, oh, six seconds to live. Dr. Alan Ostman discovers that after the hostiles breach, that not only have both heaven and hell been deserted, but the world's legendary cryptids, which function as portals to alternate dimensions, are being murdered at an alarming rate. Cryptozoic Man steps in to repel the demonic hordes, but not everything is as it seems, and mankind's fate rests on an unthinkable sacrifice. Next, we have George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones, number 18. After the death of Viserys, Khal Drogo seems content to forget his promise to conquer Westeros for his wife, Daenerys, until an assassination attempt stirs him to vows of vengeance. Vengeance is also in the air at King's Landing, where Joffrey, newly enthroned, names Tywin Lannister as the King's Hand, while Sansa Stark pleads for the life of her father, now named a traitor to the crown. Locked away, injured, and in disgrace, Eddard is offered a final bargain, for the price of his honor, he may yet save his life, and that of his daughter. We've also got Grimm, the warlock number two of five. Nick and Monroe investigate a murder on the grounds of Portland's famous Piddock Mansion. A Wesson treasure hunter dies and it's ruled an accident, but everyone in the community thinks a Blutbad is behind it. Can Nick defeat a deadly opponent who is prepared for a Grimm? Read the comic book based on the hit NBC show. Next, we have Little Vampy number one. Welcome to Stoker, Maine, the most normal, boring town in the world. Or is it? There are sea serpents roaming the docks, a mummy in the town hall, and a gaggle of ghouls and goblins just devoured the breakfast cereal aisle at the local shop mart Who's behind this monstrous rampage, and can it be stopped? When there are spooks afoot and arcane mysteries to be solved, it's time for Vampirella, teen scourge of the supernatural, to crack the case. And if that isn't enough, each little book comes with a two-page activity sheet and a panther comic strip by Brandon and Orion Jurwa and Agnes Garbowska. We've also got Lords of Mars number 6 of 6. At last, John Carter and the Ape Man are fighting side by side amidst the Aeon's old ruins of Mars. But their enemies, the evil, treacherous, and downright sleazy Therns, have a few surprises left for our heroes, including a plan to sterilize half the planet, a death-defying fight through midair, a bittersweet reckoning, and a horrific revelation about the true reach of the Therns awaits all those who dare in the eye of the goddess, the glorious final installment of Lords of Mars. And we've got Shadow number 21. The Shadow's search for the secret of the Gerasol has led him from the concrete canyons of New York City to the snowy wastes of Siberia and now to the peaks of the Himalayas, the fabled roof of the world. But will he find the answers he seeks there or only his own death? From IDW Publishing, we've got Star Trek Con number 4 of 5. The eugenics wars are over, but the next chapter in the life of Khan Noonien Singh has just begun. Only in this all-new miniseries are the secrets of Khan's revival in the future by Admiral Marcus and the agents of Section 31 finally revealed. Don't miss this exclusive tie-in to the blockbuster Star Trek Into Darkness, overseen by the film's writer-producer Roberto Orsi. Next, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Color Classics Volume 2 Number 3, another Mirage Black and White classic presented in full color. In Dome Doom, an innocent trip to the comic book store lands the TMNT and Casey Jones smack dab in the middle of a stupendous life-and-death battle between very real superheroes and supervillains. And we've got X-Files Season 10 Number 8, with hints of a new conspiracy bubbling on the surface and whispers of a new syndicate organization in the wings, a secret from the past poses a threat that only Agents Mulder and Scully can tackle. But what does the former fix-it man and the long-deceased informant named X have to do with it? From Image Comics, we've got Aphrodite 9 Number 7, Battle of the Aphrodites, Aphrodite 9 awoke in a future unfamiliar to her amidst warring civilizations battling over divergent ideologies. In the ruins of this constant strife, Aphrodite has stumbled upon her successor, Aphrodite 15. Will the lethal upgrades of the late model Aphrodite prove Aphrodite 9's obsolescence? Next, we've got Drumheller number 3. Dinosaurs ravage South Dakota and it's up to psychedelic detective Drumheller to stop them. But when everything goes wrong, Harold, the ghostly sidekick, has to use his mysterious powers to save the day. That's if he can figure out what they are and not kill anybody in the process. We've also got Elephant Men number 53, Picking Up the Pieces, Part 3. Feral and Hip Flask are getting closer to the truth, but will Feral's past catch up with him? 
Next, we have Fatale, number 19. Rock and roll, robbery, and ritual murder collide in 90 Seattle as the fourth arc of Fatale comes to its shattering conclusion, and the secret identity of Nick's present-day helper is revealed. Is he whom he claims to be? And remember, each issue of Fatale contains extra content, articles, and artwork that are not available anywhere but the printed single issues. We've also got Five Ghosts, number 8, Lost Coastlines, part 2. Fabian decides to aid his old flame, the rogue Jezebel, on a journey across the sea to the Island of Dreams. Step 1, stealing a ship. Plus, pirates. Next, we've got Hoax Hunters No. 13, The Book of Mothman, Conclusion, Season Finale. We've also got Invincible Universe No. 9, What if Cecil's Secret Strike Team unearthed in Brazil, and who will die as a result? We've also got Manifest Destiny No. 3, Lewis and Clark arrive at La Charest, the last settlement of the western frontier, to rescue all its inhabitants and scavenge supplies, but all they'll really find is horror. Next we have Minimum Wage No. 1, after a nearly 15 year hiatus, Bob Fingerman's edgy, critically acclaimed title returns as a monthly. When last we left Rob and Sylvia, they were exchanging vows at the altar. Three years later, in Rob's world, much has changed. Rob has a cell phone, he's 25, and oh yeah, spoiler alert, he's single again. Oops. Living again with his mom, it's get back on the horse time as the daunting prospect of dating looms large as a horny kraken. We've also got Morning Glories number 36 with the title simply, Welcoming Committee. Next we have Sex Criminals number 4. She can seemingly control time and space with her parts. She's as relentless a manhunter as law enforcement has ever created, and by day she's no one you'd particularly notice with her quiet suburban life and pleasant enough job. But when the temporal dimension is used to break society's laws, they call her. John and Susie get in way too deep, too fast, as one little sexy fun party crime begets another and the villains of the piece descend. Turns out John and Susie aren't the only ones after all. We've also got Sheltered number 6, new story arc, new characters, new threats. Things in Safe Haven are about to get a lot more complicated. Next we have Spawn number 239, a vampire army rises and new lessons are learned as the darkness spreads. Cogliostro continues his mentoring of Jim. Cog's latest lesson? Whatever control Jim thinks he has over the K-7 Letha is a facade, and the only way the world's newest hellspawn to truly take command is to step into the light. Meanwhile, Daniel Kilgore visits one of the innocent victims healed by Jim's gifts. We've also got three, number four. The three hellish slaves desperate to escape from the repressive Spartan regime find themselves cornered on the border but not by the pursuer they expected. Trapped and running out of options, they know the Spartan army is marching closer. They can't hide. They can't run. Are they seriously going to fight? And we've got Walking Dead number 119, All Out War Part 5, The War Comes Home. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Bloodshot and Hardcore number 18, Must Read Valiant, All New Arc, All New Jumping On Point, Get Some starts here. Bloodshot and the expendable commandos of Hardcore face off against a network of terrorist saboteurs in the heart of the Persian Gulf. But as Bloodshot digs into the multinational oil conglomerate that's signing his paychecks, he'll soon find himself confronted by the complex truth behind the terror, and face to face with an older, scrappier, more grizzled generation of superhuman soldiers from the glory days of the proxy wars, and state-sponsored assassination. Start reading here when comics legend Bart Sears comes on board for a two-part action epic pitting Valiant's 21st century shock troops against the first wave of superhuman specialists. Next, we've got Quantum and Woody number 7. So, two superheroes, a clone, and a goat move into a junior two-bedroom. As a totally questionable romance blossoms between Woody and his runaway science experiment girlfriend, Eric finds himself quickly rising through the ranks of his new employers at Magnum Security. But when he comes to find out his duties as an on-staff superhero are a bit more unsavory than he ever expected, it's down to Quantum, an old army buddy and Woody interloper, to discover the illicit truth behind Mr. Magnum's all-seeing private security empire. And we've got Shadow Man number 14, Infernal Weapons, as the Shadow Man Loa begins to exert its influence over him in even more unexpected ways. Jack Boniface is quickly coming to terms with the darkness inside him and finding out firsthand just how brutal unchecked power can be. With word of Shadow Man's increased unpredictability spreading across New Orleans, the abettors grows even more suspicious of their newest trainee and begin to consider drastic measures. Out in Trades, we've got Bloodshot Volume 4 Hardcore Trade Paperback. Every mission is someone's last. 
Out of the ashes of Harbinger Wars, Bloodshot is about to join weaponized men and women of the Harbinger Active Resistance Division, the Black Budget Technologically Augmented Strike Force, where the powers are dangerously unstable and every mission is a one-way ticket to the meat grinder. With reluctant leader calling the shots and a new crop of untested rookies manning the front line, Bloodshot is about to take hardcore behind enemy lines and into gasoline-drenched, synapse-snapping suicide run where no one is safe and heroes always die trying. Collecting Bloodshot and Hardcore number 14 through 17 and Bloodshot number 0, join acclaimed writers Christus Gage of Avengers Academy and Joshua Dysert of Harbinger Wars and superstar in the making Emanuela Lupacino of Archer and Armstrong right here to light the fuse of an explosive new chapter for Bloodshot and the Valiant Universe's most feared team of superhuman operatives. All right, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com to see both my Marvel and DC videos for the week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.